All right, my beautiful friends, uh, my post-market wrap-up for this Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. Pretty crazy day on Wall Street. Let's, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, stocks did finish lower across the board. However, well off of the lows. The last hour of trading was pretty, pretty epic. At the low, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down nearly 445 points. We did finish lower again by about 285 points. That's a pretty big swing here. Um, but again, that's not where you want to be looking. Um, earlier today, I showed you what was going on here in the bond market. Now, the 10-year yield dropped even further. So did the 30-year. Last time I looked, 10-year yield is 2.31. 30-year is 2.77. So what's happening here, and I think this was obvious to uh, many of us, is the longer end of the curve is coming down, catching up with the already inverted forward end of the curve. Um, you're not supposed to know that. You're not supposed to be looking there. You're supposed to be looking in other places. And it's all a distraction, and it's very, very troublesome to me. Um, the environment we are in is truly, it's truly unique. Um, well, at the same time, we're seeing a lot of similarities to history. You know, I'm going to talk more about that, but what I want to do here, I want to cover a few things that happened today. So I'm going to read these uh, little little bits of news and go through it. So here, we did get some uh, coverage here with regard to the 10-year yield. 10-year yield rattling uh, investors. There's a picture of a dude. He looks all troubled. Uh, the 10-year yield falls to lowest level uh, since 2017 as traders prepare for a long trade war. Okay, so that's the way that is. Uh, at least it's getting some kind of coverage. Now, let's talk about here regarding economic news. And I'm just going to read this straight off so it's not my words. The U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Manufacturing Index fell to its lowest level since 2009. Didn't get much coverage. Again, you're not allowed to hear these things. They float them out and they cover it up with something else. Um, I do not believe that we need any more proof for those of us that even have one fraction of a functioning brain cell that the U.S. economy is failing. It's absolutely failing. Just going back to the bond market real quick, if you happen to go to my website, traderschoice.net, there is a link in the description of this video. You're going to see what happened in the bond market today. Parabolic, um, massive buying here. Um, and it just goes, goes straight up. Understand, when debt is bought up, rates, rates come down. That's how the Fed has managed to prop this all up. Why there's more calls for a rate cut now, more calls for quantitative easing. You know where these are coming from. It's unbelievable. Um, it's, it's just too sick. Now, here's another one that I want you to understand. So look, um, we bailed out the farmers. Good. Uh, at least I guess uh, these people aren't going to be starving. It's a blanket thing and it's a legal thing as well from what I understand. So the bailout now uh, is now $16 billion, up from $12 billion. Again, these are installments, just like, like I have explained to you in the beginning. Um, and it's all proven to be correct. So what I'm saying here is, yes, the farms owned by China here in the United States are legally entitled to some of this cash. Uh, yeah, it gets under my skin too, but that that's just the way it is. Just like, for example, let's say uh, another country would have come to the United States, buy some farmland. They're entitled to it as well. Um, I... I don't know. Just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, but that's just the way it is. Um, and I want you to understand what this means here. Um, in fact, I'm going to read this to you. No one should have any doubt that bailouts for many industries, other than farmers, um, will be provided by you, we, the American people. More industries are going to get bailed out. There is no doubt about it. Um, 
And understand, if, if our economy were really doing as well as we're being fist-fed, would we be needing to do this? Um, you don't hear about the effects of how this trade war is affecting us. Um, or, again, understanding that, for example, we just got another round of bad economic news, the PMI, but we got industrial production falling off of a cliff here in the United States. We got all manner of economic indicator pointing towards not just a slowdown, but a contraction. And the same rhetoric is we're booming. Our economy is as strong as it's ever been. Yield curves inverting. You, it really does seem like we're in a distorted reality. And I'm not beating up on the president because I know I'm going to get... Greg, you're, why are you always beating up? I don't care who sits in the White House, all right? I'm just explaining to you what's real, what's in front of us and verifiable. The United States economy is failing, but people wouldn't know that. Again, this goes back to history, like I was explaining earlier. There have been many leaders throughout history. As a matter of fact, it's a pattern that repeats itself over and over and over again, who get kind of caught up in, I don't want to say their own delusion, but maybe that is the case, who refuse to succumb to reality that things are not what they're being shown. And this happens to a lot of people too. They get caught up in that. Uh, many world leaders throughout history, going back to biblical times, um, have led their nations into ruin via this mechanism. And again, um, it's the propagation of lies. And what I said earlier today, and I took some heat for it, some people believe that the president has no choice but to continue the lies. I don't agree with that at all. Um, I really do believe that people in their heart are, are forgiving. We really are. And I mean, for, just for example, let's say someone goes out, out of the way and, and they, they deliberately go out of the way to hurt you. And they realize how wrong it was to do that. And they come back and say, listen, I made a really big mistake. I don't know what happened, what was going through my head. And I'm, I am sincerely sorry. You know, that's happened to me multiple times in my life. And without exception, without one exception, um, I welcome that person back into my life again. And I think on a grand scale, um, the perpetuation of lies by the President of the United States, and again, I'm not beating him up, but it's, I can't understand how anyone could not see this as clear as clear can be, that we are continu continually being badgered with lies. Our economy is not booming. This is not as good as it gets, at least I hope so. Um, the President should really explain to people, look, um, I thought that maybe we could grow our way out of it. Um, what, what we have done, again, it's not just his fault. This goes back to the last president who reinflated a housing bubble, reinflated a stock market bubble. And President Trump, I'm going to give him credit where credit to do. He called him out. He called out Obama during the campaign, you know, candidate Trump. He explained things in a way that it sounded a lot like me, again, with his, his little twist on it. But he explained that the stock market was in a big, fat, ugly bubble. He explained the, the, the crime that is being committed against the people of the United States by inflating the debt bubble. I mean, these are his words, kind of, but that's how he explained it that nothing was real, that the Federal Reserve was suppressing rates just to keep the stock market buoyed to make President Obama look good. This is all the things that came out of his mouth. Then, I mean, we're talking about an epic 180 here. It's gone actually beyond belief at this particular time, but I still believe it's never, ever too late to turn it around. Every minute of your life is, is another moment to turn it all around. It really is, and explain to people that what we have here is an economy which is literally a house of cards built on top of a pool of gasoline. That's all it is. Debts and deficits are continuing to explode with no end in sight. No amount of rate cuts, no amount of quantitative easing is going to stop what is coming down the pike is just going to make it worse. Our president knows this. So when he comes out 
And it's him. Three times he has called for more quantitative easing. Multiple times he's called for a rate cut. It's not going to fix it, Mr. President. We cannot grow out of this. This is a disaster area beyond belief. And you know it's true, Mr. President. You really do. I don't know what happened to you. I don't understand it. I really don't. And I, I still refuse to believe that you're stupid. I've, I've backed you up, Mr. President. I really have. I've said the president is not stupid. He's not stupid. He knows exactly everything I have just said is 100% true. He couldn't debate this. He might try to spin it, which I wish he would stop doing. Stop spinning the lies. Stop the fake data. How about this one, too? Um, I don't even know where I put this. Um, New home sales, I, I don't even know where the article was. New home sales last month plunged 7%, uh, despite the fact that rates are dropping. Um, well, there are some that are going to spin it and say, well, at least it's higher than a year ago. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> We're in the here and now, all right? And this is supposed to be great. Rates are supposed to be dropping. Oh, they are dropping right in front of our face like we cannot believe, like I just told you. Um, but... Again, reality seems to elude many, many people here. Um, and again, it is time to, to start turning this around, Mr. President. Uh, I know how hard this would be for you. I really do. But you need to do it. You need to understand where we are. I, I know you understand where we are, Mr. President. I really do. Uh, but again, you're following in the pathway that many other world leaders have, going back to biblical times, that have led their countries into absolute disaster, ruin, and complete collapse. It's time to stop. It really is time to stop that. And uh, we need a real leader in this environment, Mr. President. And uh, I still think if you were to... Um, maybe have a real sit down with the American people, um, it would make a difference because what's happening now is people are starting to honestly, and I see this from my blog, which is pretty big, it's global. I see what people are saying when they're writing to me and people are not stupid. They understand where we are. Uh, earlier today, I, I made this as a kind of a, a comparison to Nero, uh, fiddling. Nero was sitting there, <laughs> sitting there fiddling while Rome burned. Whether that's historically true or not, I'm not here to debate it. But I'm explaining to you that that's exactly what the president is doing. He's sitting here. He's not really fiddling using a fiddle. He's fiddling with his mouth. Uh, he's playing this game, keeping up the narrative. And the narrative is absolutely false. And it's in our face false. It's the truth. I really hope that... Um, things would be different here or will be different and I still believe or hold out the hope hopium give me a dose please that maybe today maybe this moment will be the one where the president turns this all around uh, and starts either either he's actually stuck in a delusion many people it's the truth no matter what lofty title they might have if they perpetuate lies long enough they become real they become real to them. Um, so they can't see it. Because they, they themselves become blind. And that's what leads them to literally fiddle their way um, to the destruction of their country, the destruction of their people. People, we have witnessed in the past here the fall of corporations and they all got bailed out. They're still getting bailed out. Right here and now, in the United States, we are witnessing the fall of the world's greatest nation. It has to stop. It has to turn. It has to. Um, and, and if our president would explain how bad things actually are, the American people, I believe, some are going to panic. There's no doubt about it. But those who are level-headed, and, and have a grasp of what's actually happening, most of you do. Um, I do get those trolls here and there, and I am certain I'm going to get some here. Um, but I believe people would come together here. I really, honestly, that's what we need to do, and we need to do it now. 
Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I know there are entire blogs and websites that are devoted to backing up every single thing that the president does, no matter what it is. One of my best friends, Greg Hunter, he is that type of person, sadly. Um, I love the guy. And Greg, if you're watching this, I do love you, Greg. But you've got to stop. Um, you've got to start telling people the truth of where we are right now. This is not all roses. And uh, the president, uh, no individual is the savior of the people. It ain't going to happen. And unless the president levels with everyone and soon, we're headed down a path of disaster. Uh, and it goes beyond the two-party system, beyond impeachment, beyond what this, these people are saying, well, that people. Is. It's about the people. It's not about any one individual. It's about all of us. So I wish that some of these websites and some of these blogs that are devoted to, you know, fighting the president's battles for him would kind of change their tune. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Um, it's very sad, but true. I try to give it to all of you as straight as I possibly can, and I don't care who sits in that pretty White House. I really don't. It's about the people. It's about us. And if we don't understand that, and if we don't come together, we will face a worst-case scenario. Because that's exactly where we are going now. A worst case scenario being led by a leader who's either number one, caught up in his own delusion, or just doesn't have the guts to tell it like it is. And that's just terrible. People, if this has been important, please share this video. I think it's been important. I love all of you. See you in the morning.